back. Thanks for joining us again. So I was downstairs just tinkering around in the car and I decided to flick the camera on and kind of keep you guys up to speed with what's going on. I actually don't film like everything I do on the car. Um, let me know if you guys want to see some of the more of the minor stuff. This is just a little mod I was doing. But I figured I'd keep you guys up to speed with what's going on with the car. And also maybe we'll just talk about what I'm going to be doing in the next little bit because as you guys saw that last race day video, uh, my local track is closing. So I do have kind of a rough idea of what I'm going to do uh, for the future because we're not going to stop racing obviously. And of course the car is a street car. So still going to have lots of content coming. Uh, but I just figured I'd talk to you guys and uh, let you guys know kind of my rough plan. Um, now what was going on today is I was just downstairs in the garage and I started pulling all the intake water plugs out. If you guys remember um, a few videos back, actually before I had the motor totally together, I had the intake manifold drilled and tapped in the rear so I could run water lines. Uh, when we went to go onto the dyno, discovered that the Dash 8 fittings were hitting the distributor so I had to come up with a new plan and I ended up just plugging all those uh, water ports and uh, haven't touched it since. So I was down here, I pulled the distributor out, started playing around with things, and I'm like, well, let's just throw the camera on and show everybody what's going on. Plus, I thought we could talk about some of the AN fittings, because on that original startup video, some guys have said some stuff about some AN fittings, and I just want to let everybody, like, to be totally clear on certain things about that, and I'll show you guys what's going on, and just a general update for you guys. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'll get you guys up to date where I'm at and where I decided to turn the camera on. So I started draining the rad just to make sure there was no water in the upper section. And then right here you can see this Super Victor intake has a uh, water port here and a water port here. And these guys normally would probably have a temperature sensor, an aftermarket one usually there, and then like guys will run the stock one there, or they just simply plug them like I did. Now this guy here, I used an AN to NPT fitting to fit my temperature sensor. Uh, I've seen that done before and I thought it was really trick looking and that does allow me to use those two four water lines to the back. So that's really cool if you guys are interested in that. And then normally that would hook into here for your bypass. Now I've deleted the bypass. People ask about this all the time. Um, you can delete this bypass if you do not run a heater, which we do not run a heater. And if you run no thermostat, that bypass is in there in case your thermostat plugs and then water can still circulate through the motor. I'm pretty sure is how that kind of works. Um, but if you're not running a thermostat like we do not, then you can plug them both. Makes it look super clean up front. I love a clean looking engine. So you guys know that. That's why I do all these little minor things. So those two plugs there were just AN plug fittings. Actually, I'll show you them here. Really simple, just nice black guys. And then back here, so you see I pulled the distributor out and then this port here, and then this one on this side, I had this intake manifold drilled and tapped to fit plug fittings back there. Any manifolds you buy off of like Summit or whatever will not have those. So you have to get that done if you wish to do this mod. Um, stock ones do a crossover. I don't think a crossover really helps because water will still just kind of circulate and be stuck in the back of the motor. What this ultimately does is get the water from the back of the head forward quicker. Some guys say this does absolutely nothing. Some guys, a lot of circle track guys, will tell you it knocks 10 degrees out of your temperatures. And you know, if you can get 10 degrees out of it on a hot race day, I'll take that all day long. If I can run at 180 instead of 190, I'll do that for sure. Considering this is just a really simple, easy mod too. If, if you're not running like all the other extra stuff, so that's kind of where that guy's at. Um, now to fit that, oh, I'll show you a gasket real quick. So if you take your standard uh, gasket, I like these Felpro units. These are like the bomb for small block Mopar. I simply just line this up with the ports on the intake and then put the hole in the center, took it to machine shop and asked them to drill it. 3 8 NPT, I gave them a fitting so they could check the depth. As NPT fittings go in, they get tighter as they go down. So um, you'll see when we go to put the other parts on, we're gonna have to maybe mess around with that one that goes underneath the distributor as the reason I couldn't run it. You'll see that all soon. But if you're looking at doing this, you just take your gasket and mark out the center of the water jacket at the back, and then you can get that drilled and tapped. Okay, so what we got here now, um, and sorry, I kept saying AN fitting, but all, the, all these guys here into the intake are NPT, including the little plugs I took out were NPT. Sorry about that, 3 8 NPT. So this is a 3 8 NPT to dash eight. And my original plan, let's see if I can do this one-handed, was to have all these guys in like this, in all four corners. 
and then I made up two lines that were uh, 90 degrees, dash eight AN fittings to an AN line, and then they would run forward to back like that. So the problem when I got to the back though, the height of this guy in the intake, plus the height of the taller 90 degree, this would be the other way, obviously, uh, 90 degree dash eight fitting, don't fall, was too high and the distributor would hit it. The distributor would come down and hit it right there. I couldn't get it in. And you guys saw that, saw that on that uh, pre-dyno video where we were doing all the assembly, so let me pull it all apart. And I think I might've mentioned it in the dyno video. Maybe I didn't, but a lot of people have asked why I didn't do it. Um, so that's what the problem was. So I did come up with a solution and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up that first side first and then drop the distributor back in before I go ahead and put the other side together because that's just smarter. So let's take a look at that. Let's look at the fix. Ta -da! So here we go. Here is my hopeful fix, which is 3 8 NPT to dash eight. Short little elbow guy, and then we'll go to a straight section. So this is a lot shorter overall than the other setup. You can see it's even shorter than just one of those ends. So this should help us out. Now the problem with an NPT fitting, like I was saying, as you tighten it and it goes down, it'll stop wherever. So I'm gonna have to use some Teflon tape in order to get this orientated the right way. So that's the next little challenge. It shouldn't be too hard. Um, and then we should be good to go, drop the distributor and make sure we're not hitting. And then we can finish this side off, finish that side off and should be good. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, sweet, I got that in. Um, I put it in dry, got to like here with uh, nothing. And I was like, oh man, it's just gotta go a little bit further. So I pulled it back out, put some sealant on it, didn't use any Teflon, got it over to where I needed to get it and it's looking pretty good. I did have to pull that rear intake bolt out and now we'll drop the distributor back in and just make sure it's all good. But let's talk about Teflon tape and AN fittings. Okay, so let's just talk about Teflon tape because um, my startup video has got a ton of views. It's my post most popular video by far. And in that video, I did have a small fuel leak on that brand new AN assembly. A lot of guys were saying, oh, you need to put some Teflon tape on there. Don't ever put Teflon tape on your fuel fittings, you guys. Gas will eat Teflon tape, it'll turn to goo, it'll go into your carburetor and gum up your carburetor. You can use special sealants if you have um, a gas leak specifically for gas, but standard Teflon tape do not use on fuel fittings. And in fact, AN fittings don't require anything on them. They're designed in a way that they require no sealant. They're designed to lock positively on each other without sealant. So don't use anything on your AN fittings other than some oil to assemble them, uh, just a little tiny bit to assemble them. That's it. Don't ever put Teflon on your fuel fittings though. Distributor dropped right back in. You can see I made a little paint mark there just to um, get me really, really close on my timing. I'll verify timing, but that should be eh, right there. That should be like dead on to where it was. Nice thing, if you've never pulled a distributor in a small block Mopar, the gear stays inside. So literally if you make a little mark like that, you can pull that thing in and out. Do not worry about it. You could put a mark on there, pull it in and out, and your timing will be pretty much exactly where it was if you're worried about verifying timing or whatever. The gear stays inside. As long as you don't spin that thing, make it 180 out, it's really hard to mess that up. That's a really nice thing about Mopar. And, and it's cool as hell. But check that out, tons of clearance now. So let's plumb the rest of this unit, lock that guy back down, and uh, take a look. Okay, cool. Okay, plug fittings in. I'm just gonna put this guy in, just start hooking them all up. I'll grab the other side. And uh, yeah, sweet, man. It's gonna look cool. Check that out. That is like full race. That just looks so cool. I'm a big braided line AN fitting guy. <laughs> sweet. So I still do need to upgrade this line. That's a dash six. I did this uh, just temporarily to get through racing and that's why that little blue guy's there. That will be gone. That's a dash eight. Full line down to my mechanical pump. Those mechanical, that's an Edelbrock mechanical pump, by the way. Uh, those are good to like 600 horsepower and I've pretty much proven that. So that's awesome. Plus uh, I got a little filter on the end and then 90 up and I do plan on swapping this guy out. I had one for that setup there, but that's specific to that carb. So I'm gonna get a proper one for this guy and delete that blue and then it'll all look really cherry, but that looks awesome. So this is like a, some guys will say this doesn't do anything. Like I was saying, some guys say 10 degrees. 
and I'll take that 10 degrees, but you see this done on like a lot of race cars, all circle track guys do this, and those guys run at like 8,000 RPM all the time. Temperature's a big concern for them, and it's a concern for drag racers and hot rodders too, so plus it just looks trick. It's a little extra work, but you see this on all race cars, and um, oh, even like, if you get into like the high-end W series uh, small block Mopar heads, the W8s all do this, like you have to do this. You have to do something like this. They actually run underneath and then they come from four into one. They don't even have a water neck up here. It's literally ports. The intakes aren't provided with the crossover at all. So like high-end NASCAR stuff does this. So, and just looks awesome. Something a little different, you know, not everybody does it and it just looks awesome. Engine bay is looking pretty good. There are more things I want to do. I want to get some black wires, clean that look up. I still do have those other valve covers as well that I'm dabbling with if I'm going to put on here or not. I will use them eventually. Um, thought about welding on bungs and then making my own breather tanks. Just keep going on the project, right? Keep making this thing more and more unique, but that's looking great. Okay, so that's pretty much done. Um, I'm gonna let that sealant set up a little bit and then I'm actually gonna put antifreeze in it. Normally I run water all winter just for drag racing, but we're done racing for the season. So it's gonna get antifreeze in it just for the uh, corrosion inhibitor. It stays pretty warm in this shop, so I'm not worried about freezing or anything, but it does have corrosion inhibitors in it, so I like that. Uh, now let's talk about what we're gonna do next season. So I've already started looking at getting a trailer. This thing will always be a streetcar, but for me to go over to Vancouver, um, I require a trailer. So if you guys don't know, and you're in the States or whatever, I live on Vancouver Island. If you look at Canada, you look at BC, you look at the West Coast, that big island out there, I'm on that island. So for me to get over to the mainland where the quarter mile drag strip is, I have to take a ferry. It's very expensive. For me to go drag racing over there, it's over a thousand dollars. Like it'll be 500 to get on and off the ferry. Plus you gotta get a hotel. And if I didn't have a trailer and I went over there and the car broke over there, I'd pretty much be screwed until I could get the car back. If you tow it back, you'd spend, I don't even know how much. So if I'm going to Vancouver, I got to trailer it. Um, like I talked about in the last thing, there is a new track getting built. I don't know if it'll be up and running next year. If they get on it right away, they could be, but kind of the goal is now is start looking for a trailer, go quarter mile drag race, and that's always what I wanted to do. And now we know the car run a 10 second quarter, so we go get that actual ticket. So that's going to close out this video, guys. Uh, no rollout because i got to get some antifreeze in here. Um, so stay tuned. More of that. we still got insurance on the car, so we're going to hit the street again coming up. And we're going to keep playing on this thing. So stay tuned. More of that. See you next time.